Hey guys, Nicholas back with another video. Today we're going back up to the Royal Theater for the screening of the super fan documentary with Nav ba I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Nav Badia, the Toronto Raptors super fan. So I'll bring you footage from that. See you in there. Remember, like, subscribe, and share if you like this channel. Here at the super fan screening. Now. Hey guys, this is the red carpet meet and greet for the super fan.
everybody that was involved in. We were scared. I mean, every Scott and everybody could tell you I was a wreck yesterday because he hadn't seen this movie until then. And you saw the movie. You're obviously very emotional. Um, like, what, what, what are you, who are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? Like, you never gave up. You showed up at every game. Was there a time where you were like, I'm done, I can't do this? Or, like, what kept you going? Well, the love for the people and the opportunity this country has given me. I tell you, if there is a heaven on this earth, it's right here in Canada. Canada is Canada. Woo! Six years ago, I was enjoying my life and the little fame as a super fan. And here comes Rinku and says, what you want to do in your life? I want to do something with the super fan. I said, Rinku, all I want to do is I want to inspire the kids. I want to contribute back to the kids. This country, I came with nothing. And this country has given me everything. I mean, I want to put this back to the kids so that we can, we are the best country in the world, but this young people, I want them to keep this country ahead of everybody. And you are our future guys. I'm just doing it for you guys. And that's it. I think, I think uh, I'm going to loosen things up here a little bit because he's being way too politically correct up here. Well, I, did say to him, I did say to him that uh, I want somebody who is not greedy and who loves my passion to work with the kids and uh, he agreed and I guess he, he lived up to his promise. I have to say that. I want you guys actually give a big hand to Rinku because he made all this I always say, you know, there is a saying, there is a woman behind every successful man. Well, I have three women, my mom first, my daughter and my wife, and then I have written behind me. <laughs> so I'm going to add to that answer, you asked, you know, if you ever thought he was ever going to miss a game. So this is how crazy he is. You don't talk about this much, but I'm going to let, this is, I'm going to let Victoria on this. There was a time where Nav was supposed to go in for surgery and it was a pretty serious surgery and his doctor basically said, um, Nav, I think you're going to have to, we're going to have to do this surgery and you're going to have to take a month and stay in the hospital. Nav basically said, okay, you know, I'm not talking to you anymore, bring another doctor into the room. <laughs> so the second doctor, he looked at him and he just kind of asked him, okay, what do I got to do to make it through the season? And they worked out some. Uh, they worked out something, and Nap ended up delaying his surgery till the end of the season, putting himself, his life, literally at risk till the end of the season. And then he had to. He couldn't sit front row because of the danger of a player falling into him, which would have been detrimental. So he was actually sitting in the first row. So if that doesn't tell you how crazy this guy is. There's no other story I have for you. So now you guys know that he can lead a surgery. Not many people know that story. Um, you, there's a lot of elements in the movie that have legacy. And, and one of them that hit me is the Baisaki. Is that how I say it properly? Baisaki. Yeah. How did, I mean, that's a big idea. <laughs> right? When they, I don't think the guy from the Raptors was probably telling you the truth in that video. I'm sure you thought it was a little off the wall, right? How did, how did you get them to do it? How did it come about? How did it really like... Well, just a couple of months before that, I went to fix my phone. And uh, I still remember I was wearing a nice looking uh, Versace suit and Versace tie and shoes and everything. And as I walked, this young guy, Caucasian guy, was on the phone. And as he saw me, he says, Honey, I gotta go, my cab is here. And I'm looking around. Well, I guess he, I was the only guy there. So he assumed that I was the cab driver. And you know, for a minute, but I didn't blame him. But I blamed my community and the community leaders and the religious leaders who hadn't done enough for us, the Sikhs, to be a part of the mainstream. The onus is on us when we come here, how to integrate ourselves. We have responsibility also. So I always say, you know, 
it was not his fault. So I went, the next day I went to the Raptors and I said, I want to buy uh, 3,000 tickets. And they said, you're crazy, you, you lost it, man. What are you going to do? You know, 3,000, you're not going to fill it up. I said, don't worry about me. Charge me for every ticket you have, 3,000 tickets, and leave it my hand. And I, on that, we filled up the stadium and everybody was in awe. And that was the start of Misaki Games in whole of India. That was in 1999, right? That was in 1999. So where have we come from there to where we are today? What? Well, we're still doing the Misaki game, but the thing is, the good part is, every basketball team in the NBA and some other sports are also doing the Misaki Day game. Hence, you know, bringing the world together through the game of basketball and the other sports. And you know, sports brings us together. I just like my basketball. It's the best game in the world. It's the best, fastest game on this planet. And for two and a half hours, it takes you away from everything. And, and it's since 99, Misaki's had such an impact in, in the Toronto market and especially at the arena that the other secret I'm going to let you in on is if you show up to the Raptors game with a turban and a beard, you don't pay for parking and you can go anywhere you want in the arena and it's happened. Your, um, so this is a funny story too. So one day uh, after the game, we're leaving, Nav's leaving the game and the security comes up to him and says, Nav, I let your, I let your, I, I met your nephew and I let him park for free. And Nav was like, oh, okay, great. Thank you very much. And as he's leaving, he's thinking to himself, um, I don't have any nephews. <laughs> so this is the impact that Nav has had at the Raptors and just changing the perception of, of something. <laughs> What did you learn about Nav in this? Because you know this is a deep process. To, to I, go I, you know, you know, I knew I, I knew a lot about Nav from sort of probably where everybody here sort of picks up, and that's you know the the Raptors. You know, started in 2015, 2016. But um, you know, the one thing that I hope everybody took from this was his his entire life is a promise to his mom. And I didn't, I, I mean, I, I didn't really know much about that when I, you know, just getting to know Nav over the last five, six years, he doesn't talk about it. And you look back on everything that he went through and you realize, you know, it would have been, life probably would have been a little easier if he had taken the turban off and had shaved his beard and especially, you know, mid to late 80s Canada. I mean, most people that you knew had done that, right? And they're still doing it to this day. But I think that's what kind of hit me the most was, it doesn't matter what you look like, it doesn't matter what your faith is, it doesn't matter what your religion is, you know, be proud of who you are. Because if you're proud of who you are, eventually everybody else will be proud of who you are. And he's been very, he's been very, you know, very much, this is me, take me for who I am. The, my philosophy is very simple, his philosophy is very simple. I'm going to treat you how I want to be treated. And that, you know, I, I mean, look, I, I mean, I'm a little younger, but um, you know, I had a little bit of attitude. I'm an Aries, it comes with the horoscope sign, but you know, the, I, I've learned that from him. You know, just calm down, no need to get angry. Let's treat everybody, let's take the high road, not, don't worry about the low road, and, and that's the impact that Nav has had, and that's what I hope everybody took from this, is you know, just be proud of who you are. Um, very well said. By the way, so we're going to have, we have mics on each side. If people want to come up and ask now the question, feel free to come up. Don't be shy. Um, one question I have, I see you have a lot of interactions with a lot of these players. Is there, is there a moment or, or two that stick out, maybe one of your favorites or one of your favorite players? All these guys, I love them. You know I love ballers, only for 48 minutes. Raptors, I cheer for my Raptors. But other than that, before the game and after the game, they are my brothers, they are my kids. And uh, I can tell you so many stories, if you will. But uh, you know, like a Demar, Vince Carter has been my, Vince Carter is not my friend, he's my family. And uh, I tell you one thing, we as the Raptors owe a lot to him of our survival. And we are survived and thrived because of him. And last, uh, you know, uh, 
what can I say? All the guys, you know, once they're after, they're always they're rappers for me, they are my brothers. It doesn't matter where they are playing, which team are they, they are my brothers, they are my kids. And uh, you know, I get to uh, I think you should the Damar story is amazing. You gotta tell the Mr. Damar story. I have so many we stories, but there is a you know Shaq only became a friend of mine because I was uh, you know I was picking on him all the time, that's why he became my friend. And he used to uh, you know, tease me in a lot of ways. He used to call me Taliban at times. And one day I told him, I said, the next time you call me Taliban, I'm going to say I'm funded by you guys. And after that, he has never called me a Taliban. Uh, another thing, with Demar DeRozan, you know, he's uh, very close to me. If you have seen when Demar was here three years ago, you know, he, his wife always sat with me and his kids always were playing with on my lap, playing with my beard, and there was a little joke between his daughters and me because his daughter was very well dressed up, and when she came out with all the gears on her, you know, with the Jordans and the night, and I used to tease her, I said, I'm looking better than you, and she would say, no, I am, you know, and uh, in the end, she was the best uh, dressed, you know, girl in the arena, I, I always lost to her, but Demar DeRozan, Brian Colangelo was the general manager, and uh, he called me one night and said, tomorrow I have a player coming, we have drafted him and I knew he was drafted by us, he's from USC and he's coming and uh, help him out, he has your number, he's going to call him. So he called me and we get, got together and uh, he asked me, he says, sir, you know, very respectful kid and he says, sir, I, 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 I don't have a car right now and I need a car, I want to rent a car from you for a few months and uh, I said, okay. So he told me he wants an SUV. So the next morning, seven in the morning, I had a Range Rover parked in his place. And he was very <laughs> happy. He used it for five, six months. And when his car came, he returned it to me and he says, what's the, what do I owe you? And I, I said, owe me a hug. That's all you owe me. And he hugged me. I need a car too. <laughs> <laughs> you can shoot though. Can you shoot? No, that's why I'm here. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, so since then, if you see the game ever, just before the game, he will always come and hug me for a minute or two, and sometimes it has gone ridiculously two and a half, three minutes, and people are hurt. But he's very close to me, he's a family to me, and one day, his car didn't work, so he borrowed my car, and the car was a a Bentley Monsen and it had a, a plate super fan. <laughs> so he loves Mexican food. So after the game, he went to pick up the Mexican food. He's from Southern California and they love their Max and Mexican food. So he went there and he's sitting inside and his uh, assistant uh, went inside to pick up the food. And a couple of kids come in the bicycle and they are uh, knocking at his window, at the driver window. He rolls down the window. And the kids say, sorry, we thought it was the super fan, and they left. <laughs> um, welcome to Victoria, home of the favorite son, Steve Nash. Uh, other than Vince Carter, do you, have a, do you have fondness for any other players? I'm a fan of every player who Thank plays you. basketball. I'm a fan of every player. I just uh, told that once they are, uh, you know, every player who plays, Iverson, you know, Tracy McGrady, Shaq O'Neal, all these guys, they are all, I'm a fan of all of them, you know, because I do sincerely believe that basketball brings the people together, and that's why I'm uh, going to continue using the game of basketball to bring the world together. Thank you. Thank you. I can tell you how the new favorite player is right now. It's Scotty Barnes. It's, uh, I think one question probably everyone wants to know is, do you sleep with that ring on? No, I don't. Let me just tell you, this ring, I accept it. There's no business of me getting this ring. And there is, of course, no business of getting me getting a Hall of Fame ring. If I, you know, I should be actually banned from Hall of Fame because I can't shoot a basketball properly. But I'm blessed and with all your love, and most of the time, I have found out that 
you know that when somebody has a championship ring, the ring goes directly into the safe at the bank. For me, it doesn't make sense. I want to show this ring. When I go to the games, I wear this ring and I share with three to four hundred kids every time because I want to inspire them. I want to tell them if I can do it with so many strikes against me, they can definitely do it. And that's all I want to do. Very well said. It's amazing to sit here to, you know, you look at the West, uh, the way that festival came about with the vision of Scott and Clint and, and Nick. And here you are sitting on stage a couple years later in Victoria, showing your movie, your story, sharing with Victoria. Are these guys even get a basketball, by the way? <laughs> Scott, Scott, is. Scott, is. Scott will tell you he is. I will tell you he is. He yeah. sends me videos every week of him <laughs> playing basketball. He is. First Where of all, I'm not showing the movie here. It's thanks to Scott, Clint, and Nick, and the team of We The Best. Everybody there, their hard work. They are the one who have posted the movie. Without them, we would have been here. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One more question, and then Nap, uh, nah, thank you. Thank you so much for coming to Victoria. Um, one of the questions I have for you, obviously, it's well documented that you're great friends with a lot of the players, DeMar DeRozan being one of them you spoke earlier about. A few years ago, he departed from Toronto in the Kawhi Leonard trade that allowed us to win a championship, which is great, but DeMar always spoke about maybe spending his entire career in Toronto. When that happened, how did you feel? I cried. I did cry, but it's not in my hands. He's an amazing guy. He took 20, 20 million dollars less to sign with Toronto. God bless him. But you know what? He's going to win his championship. Look at him in Chicago today. And he's doing very well. December 22nd, I'm going to Chicago with 10 of my friends from, uh, from Toronto. And we're going to show a lot of love and respect here. So that happened. And uh, good for Kawhi that we were able to get in the second ring. So, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Go ahead. I have a question. What do you think about if we have an NBA team back in Vancouver like next, next few years? An NBA team in Vancouver, what do you think? Uh, I think uh, it is going to be tough. You guys have to, the Vancouver has to show a lot of, you know, because uh, Seattle is there in the lineup there also. So I think it's going to be tough. They had their opportunity. They let it go, and uh, you know, with, without corporate sponsorship, it's not possible to run an NBA team or any other sports team. So I think it's going to be difficult. But uh, I think uh, uh, I, I, I will be the first one to say that we need another team in Canada because whenever I'm coming to Victoria and Vancouver, the fans are really showing me the love of basketball. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you want to wrap it up? Like, like, this is your vision in your movie. You just saw it with a room of yeah, fans. Yeah, nice. how are you feeling? Are you guys all following Nav on Instagram? Yeah. Uh, more people need to be here. You guys are following Nav on Instagram. Um, all we ask of everybody here is, uh, you know, please, when you leave the theater, please, you know, jump on your social media, talk to your friends, family. December third. 9 p.m. CBC. This is Eric Nationwide. And, you know, we want as many eyeballs on that screen as possible. Uh, it's an incredible story. It's an incredible person, an incredible man now. And it's a, it's a privilege for all of us, you know, to be you know, know, to know him and be associated with him. And we want to show the whole world, we want to show the whole Canada that we are in the best country in the world. And, uh, you know, when people go low, we go high as Canadians. And that's what I've been doing all my life. Yes, we are having speed bumps. Yes, we are not a perfect country, but we are the best country in the world. And I want you to really, uh, I want you to share this thing so that a lot of people can see this movie on the CBC. And I believe it will bring us in the end. This will bring us all together. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you for all you have been here this afternoon. Be the one to stop playing and make this amazing human right here. All right guys, just left the theater. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Sorry, I decided not to take any videos 
during the movie, the actual movie of it, but if you want to, if you want to watch the documentary of NAV, it will be aired on CBC, as you heard, December 3rd, 9 p.m., I think that's Eastern Time, not 100% sure, but it will be aired on CBC, so watch out for that on CBC, and yeah, hope you enjoyed the Q&A with him, and hope you all have a great night. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share to my and share my channel. Bye.